Angela Griffin Brigade. Oh, Hi, Tink. Are you well? Good to see you. Happy. Yeah. How are you? Great, thanks. I'm Thank the lady you. in charge. How are you, Tink? Oh, yeah, good to see you. Hello, Gordon. Freckle face. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you. Right, Ange, very competitive. So yeah. unbelievably competitive. You don't want to fail at this, do you? No, we've had, we've had a little pep talk before, Ange. Have yeah, you got what it takes, Stevie? I think we have. I think yeah. we have come here to mess. We've come here to win it. Meet tonight's family brigade, the Griffins. ex cory actress Angela is joined by competitive husband Jason, who's determined to outdo his wife in the kitchen. Angela's mother-in-law, Joan, a fitness instructor, should have no problem handling the fast pace of my kitchen. And burly brother Steve, a prison officer, will be on the receiving end of orders for a change. If this family's fighting talk is anything to go by, they could be in with a chance of being my top brigade. Right, stuff fried duck. Now, the most exciting thing about the duck is slightly gamey, very succulent, but packed with flavour. Bit of spice spice in there. Don't over season it with fire spice. Yeah, touch of salt. Right, heat the olive oil. Nice. You soak the duck, not boil the duck. The big difference. Now open it up so it doesn't all clog in the centre of the pan. Nice little toss. Again, don't leave it off the heat too long. The secret is getting a really nice sear on the meat. Spring onions in. Spring onions. Yes. With some soy. Don't go crazy, don't flood the pan with the just sauce. A bit. Just start off. You can always add, but you can never take, take away. away. Yeah? And again, just tilt the pan and just toss. If you've got the heat in the pan, it does itself. You know that? Yeah. The job works itself. Is that okay? like a glazing factor again? That's exactly that? what you're doing. Good question, yeah, Steve. Lovely. All we're doing is glazing the meat. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Cucumber on. That's been sliced. The seeds have gone. The most important thing about taking the seeds out of the cucumber, okay, it stops it from becoming really watery. Yeah. yeah. All the water in the cucumber's in its yeah, seeds. That's right. I've okay, so that. we get rid of that. I'm learning all yeah. sorts here. Yeah. I'm so, not See, we've still got the heat in the pan. You can just hear the heat. Yeah. 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 Nice crisp, let it leave. Into the centre. And then from there, over. And again, right over the pan. That smells amazing. And it's so quick. So oh. it's the exciting <laughs> thing about this, okay? It's vibrant, it's very, very healthy, and more importantly, so straightforward. Sure. Have a little it's taste. Jesus Christ, that's insane. Now, Jay, you like that? Mm. Beautiful, bro. Mm. You can really taste the spice in that. Wow. Beautiful. Now, let me tell you something. If you get 50 portions out like that, 50 very demanding diners will pay for that. Okay? Are we ready? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah? So on order, yes. Four covers table eight, four duck, four sea bream, four milfoy. Yes, yes, chef. Yes, chef. Excellent. Good. Is that one each. Yeah. So okay. We're doing nice, two each. clean cool. I like that. Chef, I'll do two portions each. Two and two, because you're doing one table of four each. Yes, chef. We turn what, what we've got between. I'll do it. I put those in there, Steve. All right. Don't get frustrated. Let's go. Don't yeah. worry. You'll get there. Come on. Jason. Yes, sir. You two have got the same matching pajamas, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. You know that. Do you feel at home now with yes, a set of it. chef whites on? Yeah. How do you know that? Hey, trust me. I've done my homework. Yeah. Right. Here's the perfect way to get rid of stress: salmon fishing. Let's go, Stevie Wonder. Weaving across the borders of England and Scotland is the River Tweed. 97 miles of stunning scenery, and more importantly, home to some of the best salmon fishing in Britain. Jack and I love fishing, and we're here to try and catch our very first salmon in Scotland. With the help of experts, Bill Stanworth and Ian Wood. Gentlemen, good morning. Morning. I hope he's not a jinx today. Oh, oh, hi, Ian Wood. Bill Stanworth. Good to see you. Bill, good to see you. Hi, Jack, how you doing? Hi. Nice to see you. Now. Never fished on the Tweed before. What's the chances? Yeah, it was in a good chance. It's not an easy river to fish, is it? So it's when you get down to the bottom end of the Tweed. A bit wide down there. Yeah. But where we are today, I mean, this is one of the prime middle beats. So, yeah, this right. is a good chance. I've caught lots of trout, but I've never, ever caught a salmon. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Are you ready? This is an amazing river, you know that? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of big fish out there, but fish, seriously, bigger than you. OK, so if you hook into one, stand strong. Scottish salmon is world-renowned. It's organically farmed here to the highest standards, but caught wild, it's a true delicacy. The Tweed has one of the highest salmon catches in Scotland, and Jack and I are determined to hook one of our own. You and I can't look like idiots today. We're gonna have to catch something, because these guys are hard asses. They're serious. Come on, jump in. <laughs> <laughs> Wading through the water will improve our chances, so looking a bit of a knob is a small price to pay. You look like a womble. All the gear, yeah, and no idea. We're heading to some of Bill's favourite fishing spots to learn how to fly fish, the holy grail of fishing on the Tweed. It's a completely different technique, isn't it, from trout fishing? Trout fishing, yes, yes. Christ. It's a case of you'll feel when it's right. There we are. Be fishing, sir. You need to walk the river, casting every couple of minutes. 
out of the 380 fishermen doing this yesterday, only eight salmon were caught. I was hoping Jack would double our chances. Right, Jack, go and get your rod. OK. Maybe you have a lot more luck than I'm having at the moment. Don't catch one before I do. Why? You're in trouble. I'll send you back to school. With the two of us fishing and no quick catch, I was starting to appreciate why wild, wild salmon is such a delicacy. And I knew exactly what I'd be doing with ours, if we got any. When it's smoked, salmon is at its most flavoursome and its most delicious. I plan to make some at home that will taste 100 times better than anything you can buy in the shops. But in the middle of the tweed, that looked like a distant dream. Dad, have you caught anything yet? No, not yet, mate. Thank you, Jack. No pressure. They are difficult fish to catch, aren't they, Bill? That's all part, of, part yeah. of the fun of it. At 41 years of age, Scottish, I cannot leave here until I've got one. Mid-afternoon, we moved to some faster-flowing water known as the Cauld. In desperation, I changed tactics and ditched the fly fishing for spinning, the way my dad taught me when I was Jack's age. The technique of spinning allows us to cover a lot more distance across the water than fly. A lot more quicker, and you're constantly reeling in. The lure imitates a small fish. OK, Jack? Yeah, you're fine, right? thanks. To maintain salmon stocks, conservation guidelines ask that you put back every other fish you catch. But that didn't look as though it would be a problem today. Mate, time is running out. Fishing for salmon is all about patience. Not my strong suit, but I wasn't stopping until Jack and I got one. Once we catch one, we're going to smoke it. And, mate, it's the only time in your life I'll allow you to smoke. Come on. Where are they? Finally, a bite on my line. Fuck. Yep, he's on. Shit, he's just run down the weir. Don't let it go! Jesus. Oh, fuck. He's strong. He's fine. Nice and easy. Look at the size of that fin. As this was the first salmon I caught in Scotland, if I could land it, I could keep it. Yeah! Beauty! Excellent. Straight on the nut. There you go. He's done. Way. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you're going to kiss a few old salmon trouts in your days. Come on, kiss. One more. One more. Wow, yes. First ever, and hey, mate. You're here as well. Yeah. Together. Let's go, buddy. Thanks. Well, we're going to smoke it now. Yep. It's going um. to be really nice. Let's go. And Whoa. Stevie, stop. A little taste. You've Ooh, got to taste. Great onion. Enjoy yourself, JC. Loving Good. it. I feel like I've lost about four stones. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. You're doing a great job. There's three tables to go, yeah? yeah. Nice, nice, nice. If you can't stand me, you get out of the Good. kitchen. Good. Good. <laughs> She's alive right that one, isn't she? <laughs> Fuck me. Amazing. Here's the question. If you're both in the kitchen at the same time, who's the most dominant? Probably me. Jason. I allow him. Ah. Get lost. Off we go. It's true. Keep the pan away from the plate, darling. Good Sorry, girl. Sir. Well done. Nice and gently. Yeah, then we're all nice and clean. Last minute, sprinkle. Well, uh... Up. Let's go. Well done. Well yes. done on that table five. Hey. Well, well done. done. Now, let's hope they all pay for it, yes? Well done. Good evening, Good ladies, evening. gentlemen. Good evening. Welcome, nice to see you. How was your starter? Slightly peppery for me. A little bit too hot, or...? Um, yeah, quite a lot of pepper. It's overpowering. Damn. Okay. The idea of the cucumber going in, of course, was to sort of cool it down yeah. a little bit, yeah. combined with the lettuce, of course, to make sure that it wasn't too hot. Yeah. Something you could try at home? Yes, definitely. Yeah? Either thought it was fantastic. The duck was well cooked, I thought. Uh -huh. not, not overdone, which I was... Yeah, it can get a bit tough. Absolutely. Definitely. Are you on half time this week? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Should you be drinking? Um, yeah, my mum, my mum knows she's... Like, <laughs> Sometimes duck is too rich for me because it can be really... lots of oil in there, but actually this... It, it's quite delicately flavoured. Jose. OK. The number of customers that are paying out of 50. That is fantastic. 46 out of 50. Really good. Really good. Yes. Yes! Really good. Now, for main course, I want perfection. Oh. Yes. Hey, we're on a roll yes. now. We're on a roll, 50 chef. 50 out of 50. Well done, great start. Right, on your sessions, clear down. <laughs> Coming up, I'm with the fire brigade in Oldham, trying to ignite a passion for healthy eating. When was the last time the station saw some lettuce in there? Oh, years. And David and Elton finally come out. 
I should have trained that one for the Grand National. Joe, any yes, seasoning on that fish? No, no chef. Sure. Sure. Let's go. Woo. Welcome back to the F-Word. Time for the main course. Saffron marinated fillets of sea bream, a nice, sweet, delicate flavour, and the skin, once it's crisp, is delicious. Score. Olive oil. Saffron. Place the fillets skin side up, then just leave that to marinate in the fridge. Sweet and sour peppers. Slice. The thinner they are, the quicker they cook. Hot pan. Olive oil. Season. And the secret now is to start the caramelization. Sugar, red wine vinegar. That gives it this sour flavor. Out onto a plate. Cool. Bream. The most exciting thing about the sea bream now is that it's changed color. Hot pan, skin side down. Lovely. Season. Whilst that's in the pan, take your peppers. Basil. And all you do is just mix that fresh basil through those wonderful sweet and sour peppers. Baste. Olive oil. And that has to be the perfect way of eating sea bream with sweet and sour peppers. Saffron marinated bream with sweet and sour peppers. Done. That's it, good. Sauce and vinegar in. Nice. Stevie, we can do this. Joan. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Come on. Let's get all these out, then we're going to get good. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's just get them out. Oh, after. The fish has got to come out of the pan, ladies, yeah? James. Right. This looks a bit. Right. What did we it's not, it's no, it's fine. absolutely fine, but if you don't get it out, yeah, it's, it's going overcooked. Fine. Let's go. And stay yeah. here. That fish is beautifully cooked, by the way. Absolutely perfect. Well done. Right, Angie, you happy with those? Absolutely. Did you pay for them? Static. That's We're very nice. Here, chef. Very nice. Right, Jay. Yes. Four more now, big boy. Four yes, yeah. Can I start plating up, chef? Wait, not yet. Two seconds. Okay, chef. Right, so oh, stop, 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 stop. Sorry. Your, your fish is stuck. Four. Start again, yeah. Two. And Stevie, I want you yes, to finish chef. this table with Joan, and yes, then we'll chef. do a four together, okay? Yes, chef. You and I. Yes, chef. Fucking hell. Come on, guys, you've got to step up again now, yes? Now, this lot need help, and it's a real food emergency. <laughs> Firefighters need the right food to have the strength to tackle their dangerous job. You'd think they'd eat properly, but when they're on call, they often take the easy way out with fast food and takeaways. <laughs> Alison O'Donnell is one of the 4% of female firefighters in the UK and the only one working at this station. We tend to eat a lot of stodgy food, curry, chips with everything. It does make you feel quite heavy. I don't like vegetables at all. They don't smell nice. They're just horrible. It looks like I've got my work cut out for me here. I'm in Oldham to meet the White Watch firefighters who seriously need help with what they eat. Alison, how are you? Hi, Gordon. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Good to see you too, my darling. That looks like hard work. It is hard huh? work. Run me through a normal dinner. What would it be? Uh, a normal dinner would probably have, say, curry, chips, in terms of um, budget-wise, I mean, how much have you got to spend on food? Realistically, it's about two pounds per meal per person. So you don't get an allowance? No, we pay our own food. That's why we're so stingy. Anyway, less of the talking. Let's get you some kit on and get joined us. Right. You're right, bossy cow. You are, you? Where's I'm going to show Whitewatch how to cook a healthy alternative to their usual fast food. But first, to give me an idea of what they face day to day, they're sending me into a fire simulation building to find a survivor. In the kitchen, what would you cook a? Chicken up. Roast chicken, 180, 190. 180, well, typical house fire, 1,000 degrees. The simulation is designed to recreate the conditions of a burning building and disorientate me in constantly increasing temperatures. I'm wearing a fog filter, which impairs my vision exactly like real smoke would. This is all I can see through my visor. Can I put this over my shoulder? It's bloody hot. Each room is full of hazards and I can't see anything. I'm totally disorientated. Finding a casualty in these circumstances is like finding a needle in a haystack. The more I exert myself in the heat, the quicker my oxygen supply goes down. You've got 120. Come on, it's person reporting. Come on, man. With virtually no visibility, Alison and I eventually find the dummy victim and I start carrying it to safety. Then my air supply runs out. And I have to scramble to get outside. Come on, he's got no airway. 
He's on zero air. Yeah. Had this been a genuine fire, I'd have been in real trouble. Jesus Good Christ effort. almighty. That's manic in there. Oh, my God. I love the heat, but from a kitchen <laughs> point of view, not from a house on fire. <laughs> Fuck, mate. Having trained with Alison and her team, I know that filling their bodies up with stodgy food is the last thing they need. I'm going to show them a healthy version of one of their favourite foods, burgers and chips. Today, it's Alison's turn to cook, so I'm taking her down to the supermarket to get everything we need for just £2 a head. Are they value? When was the last time the station saw some lettuce in there? Oh, years. Right, capers for the relish. Can I have a little taste? Oh. Excuse me, you put me in a right, house okay, yeah, okay, with a mask and I couldn't see. Food. <laughs> oh, it's all right, actually. I don't think this lot will be under 20 quid. You don't think so? I'm hoping that is going to come under that. 1969. 1969, oh, yes, look at that. <laughs> My healthy homemade beef burgers will give the firefighters the energy and nutrition they need. Burgers don't have to be full of fat. If you make them yourself, you're in control of exactly what goes into them. The most amazing burger. Yeah. Yeah, a beetroot radish okay. and homemade chips. Right, okay. Right, mince. Season with salt and pepper and then mix. Smoked paprika gives depth to the flavour. Cayenne pepper adds some heat. Tabasco sauce for even more kick. I'll have to remember not to scratch my eyes after. No, no, it's going to be hot. Add Worcester sauce and ketchup to season. Mould the burger mix into patties and place them in the fridge to firm them up. Easy to cook later on. Guys, how do you like your burgers? Rare, medium? Big. Big. Large. <laughs> Large. Cut potatoes into wedges and part boil in salted water. Baked potato wedges are a healthier and tasty alternative to chips. Then prepare the baking tray for the wedges with salt, pepper and olive oil. Jess, do you need a lift with anything? Uh, hey, hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Dean <laughs> Smith with a dick. Get in there! <laughs> Season the parboiled wedges with olive oil, salt, pepper, a little Tabasco sauce, chilli flakes and finish in the oven on preheated trays. <laughs> Right, uh, beetroot and capers behind yep, you. Yep, OK. We're going to make a really nice relish now. Beetroot is rich in iron. Add balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, olive oil, capers, and then blend. Flat leaf parsley adds an earthy, fresh quality to the relish. That's quite nice, actually. I don't nice? like beetroot. Yep, <laughs> that's lovely. I've done that quite quickly, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, nice. Chop salad to add colour and toast your baps to stop them going soggy. Then we're ready to go. Hey, are you hungry? Lovely. Juggling <laughs> 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 tomatoes. <laughs> A nice, healthy, quick, mm. yeah, mm. under two pound, yeah, <laughs> cheap burger. Absolutely. Well done. Absolutely. Well done to you, sweet. <laughs> uh, very good. Come on, guys, let's just speed up a little bit. We can finish this one properly. Let's go. Well done, well done, well done. Right. Crack on. I'm on go, three. Let's go. I've got three here, Right, guys, so last two tables, yes? I've got one six and one table of two, yes? Let's right. go, let's go, let's go. Oil in. Oil, done. Fish, done. <laughs> Make that the best, Joan, please, yeah? OK, Golden. Yeah? Come on, guys, last Golden, two you tables, just yes? Just concentrate on the fish. These. Just concentrate on the fish. I'll do it for okay. the Well, oh, we've got eight here. Go in. Top, 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 Clean the plates, Ange. Don't run away from me. Come on. Double check that fish, Steve. Let's go. Fish. Go. Well done, yes? Okay. Jason. Seriously, well done, yeah? That was huh? the hardest ever. Okay, clear down, guys, yes? Fuck. Yes, yeah, chef. Right, time to find out what Janice Street Farm has been up to. Over the last two months, Janet Street Porter has gone all old McDonald raising veal calves for the F-word restaurant in a back garden in North Yorkshire. Come on, get on the case. 
So far, Janet's been keeping the boys indoors on the advice of Joe Collingbourne, a veal expert with over 20 years farming experience. Joe's helped make sure Janet's calves are happy and healthy, with lives that are a million times better than calves kept in veal crates. He's advised keeping them indoors because he reckons barn-reared calves are less muscular than free-range calves, so they produce more tender meat. However, some farmers think slightly differently. Well, this is such a dilemma, whether to let David and Elton out of their barn and be free range. Well, I need to discuss this with someone who's a bit of an expert, so I've come up to Scotland. <laughs> Janet has come to Dumfries and Galloway on the Scottish borders to visit Dominic Smith's farm, where he lets his cars run free because he believes it produces better meat. Hi. Hi. So you don't think that keeping the calves outside makes the meat tougher, because that's what some people say. Certainly not in our experience. Um, we found the meat very tender, um, but it's got a bit more character about it. Almost all veal calves begin their lives indoors. So in here we have our very young calves that are still feeding milk. What's a pig doing in here? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> the calves don't seem to mind them, and they'll lick the milk off the floor. <laughs> I <and> can't <laughs> believe it! <laughs> Right, where are they? Go on! At Dominic's farm, at 12 to 14 weeks, the calves are let out to pasture. Go on! Go on, laddie! And when you sell your meat, you've got happy customers who never said it's tough. No. Well, they do look very healthy. <laughs> sell our guys. He's coming in with us. He wants lunch too. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a big car? <laughs> Free range farming clearly appeals to Janet, but is it any good for the meat? The truth is in the tasting. Never before has so much depended on one steak. If Janet likes the flavour and the texture of Dominic's free range veal, David and Elton could live out their remaining weeks in the great outdoors. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're happily worried then for a minute. That's a strong silence. <laughs> I was thinking about it. Having seen and tasted both sides of the story, Janet heads back to Yorkshire to decide how to raise the calves for the remaining few weeks. You say his meat's tender, but um, it'll be a different type of meat than what I'm producing. But you see, Fish. mine is on whole milk right yeah. the way to All death. All right, I can see this will go 12 rounds. <laughs> right. I know, I'm sorry, Joe. Don't apologise. I'm You're sorry. You're a woman of principles. I'm sorry. Very few men could move you, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sorry. I've seen how Dominic does it, and I think for the bit of life they've got left, I want them to have the same view that I have. Certainly and stop crapping all over each other and wiping <laughs> their asses on the wall. I've made my decision, they're coming out. Come on. Jailbreak. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> I should have trained that one for the Grand National. I didn't mind about Gordon's field dinner. Definitely the right decision. So Janet and her calves are happy. The only beast locking horns on this farm are Joe and Dominic. There's a severe physical stress there. So will Janet's free range gamble pay off? We'll find out in a few weeks when David and Elton are slaughtered and served in the F word restaurant. Let's just hope she's not having second thoughts. Janet, welcome back. Nice to see you, my darling. Thank you. Because, mm, always a pleasure. Oh, now, good news. David and Elton, yes, yes. come out. I just thought, they've been in that barn now for quite a few months. Yes. And it's boring. They've only got a few weeks of life left. Let now, them have a bit of fun. Now that they're free range, yeah, it's not that far away. The end is in sight. Are you getting attached or have you, you know, I'm involved with yourself? the process. I've you've sold to them, yeah. you've slept with them, you've walked with them, I've you've kissed them, for you've them. danced for them. And I've wiped yes. up their poo. Are you going to be sad when they've gone? I'll be sad if they don't taste really great. 
after all that effort. See? It's I think you're getting project. soft, do you know that? Because already you're no part emotionally... of me is getting soft. Right. Not one fucking bit. <laughs> oh, I'll Jesus. tell you, Gordon, I, that my goal is to produce me yeah. that you are not going to moan about, that right. you're going to be proud of, you're going to say, Janet, you did a good job. Yes, I'm and very And that's why I'm it. doing it. You look great, by the way, yes? You've been definitely rambling a lot. You look free range and wonderful. Ladies, good evening. Gentlemen, how are we? Hi, good. Nice to see you. <laughs> now, you look like a man who doesn't do small portions. No. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. How was your main course? Very good. Yes. Very good. Especially with the peppers as well. That's gorgeous. Lovely. Fine flavours. When's the big day? When's the wedding? You've got your time. You've got your suit. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Oh, I'm ready. You're smart. You know that. What do you do? Police officer. No, you're far too short to be a police officer. Short exactly. Bit. Stand up. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, right. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Fucking hell. Cooked to perfection. The flavours and everything, just literally, just very really subtle, but they all come through together, and it really, really works. And the presentation is perfect. Right, Jose. Results of the main course. Need to be nervous. Thank you. Okay. The number of customers that are paying oh out of God. fifty for their main course is forty-six out of fifty. Yay! Yes. Yeah! <laughs> really well done. Now, oh, what do we want for dessert? 50. Oh, Come on, what 50. do you want? 50. We need 50. It's in sight now, yes? yes. 50 out of 50 oh, for dessert, gosh. yes? When you get a dish out and it looks fantastic and you get a nice compliment, then it's, it's, it is worth it. Well, that was hard. I'm, I'm wrecked. <laughs> do I look like a wet rag? Because <laughs> I feel like one. That was pretty stressful. I've never felt heat like that. I've, I actually feel like I am in an oven rather than a kitchen. It's insane. Coming up, rock legend Meatloaf tears it up in the recipe challenge. Ah, it's a bag of frozen peas! <laughs> frozen corn! That's disgusting. Right, welcome back to Effort. Now, time for the part of the show where I take on a celebrity and beat them at their favourite dish. Tonight's challenger is Mr. Loaf. Meatloaf. Do I, do I have I, to do this? I'm with excited. You? I can tell. <laughs> I just wondered if this is part of the show. Are you ready to cook? I, I'm yes. ready to cook. What's the dish called? No, I'm making meatloaf tuna fish casserole surprise. The surprise. The surprise. <laughs> what have you got there? In can. I'm not going to tell you. Can of beer. No, I'm not telling no. you what they okay. are. And is the dishes evolved over the years, or something that you've had your sort yeah, of? Yeah, it, it evolved. It evolved last night, actually. <laughs> yes, hold on. See, because no, I've, I've been watching you. I've been watching your show. Know, yeah, no. What? I'm, am I distracting you <laughs> in any way? <laughs> I'm doing something very, very similar. I'm going to do like a tuna pepperade, finished with some really nice breadcrumbs, and then baked in the oven. My secret ingredients is this: a chorizo sausage to give it some heat, and more importantly, give it a really nice colour. You're boiling celery. That's right. Disgusting. <laughs> you grew up in Dallas? I did. What was the food like? Everything fried. Yep. When I was a kid, there was a commercial, poor fat Marvin can't wear Levi's. And that was me. My name was Marvin and I couldn't wear Levi's. And did that make you miserable as a child? Did that make you sort yeah, of... Yeah, hell yeah. They, they, you know what? Yeah. You'd get... Uh, there would be parents yep. that would say, you're too fat to play with my kids. So how you would that make joking. you feel? That's disgusting. When was the turning point in your career that you started eating healthily? I don't know, January. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Since 89. 89? Yeah. Seriously. Is it true you used to be a vegetarian? I was for 11 years. Did you change your name from meatloaf to nutloaf? Now, that's a stupid thing to say, Gordon. <laughs> OK, I'm going to start sweating <laughs> off my peppers, shallots, garlic, with this little baby here, a Srijo. Slice it nice and thin so the oil comes out very, very quickly. And we're going to fry it off. OK, here we go. It's a bag of frozen peas! <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a minute. Boiled celery, frozen peas, yeah. and a secret ingredient. That's right. I'm wetting myself <laughs> with excitement. Thank fuck I'm not a blind taster. I'm just going to quickly roast my vine tomatoes just straight into the pan. Now I have a bag of frozen corn. <laughs> <laughs> really important to roast these peppers, chorizo, onions, garlic, okay, off. let's see. Give them a really nice yeah, flavour. Are... OK, while you're doing that, I'm going to do this. Right. Opening my bag of noodles. Now, three or four tablespoons of sherry into the peppers and tomatoes and leave that to evaporate. You've had an amazing career, you know that. That over hell sold over 30 million records. Yeah, but that's not near as good as... Do you know how many contests, uh, cooking contests, I've won with this recipe? Go how many? You didn't check that research, huh? No, go on, You're so me. cocky. <laughs> Tuna in. Literally 30 seconds of the pan, flash fried, then out to drain. 
Do you still party hard, like an old-fashioned rocker? Are you getting a little bit deaf in your old age? I said, are you getting a little bit deaf? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, as a matter of fact. So what I've done so far is I boil celery, peas, corn, and carrots. And now I put them all in a big saucepan with a little olive oil, and I'm going to stir them around for a few minutes. Tomatoes have almost pureed down. Secret ingredient. What is it, mate? Come on. Nope, not tell until oh, after on, it's over. Beans. What is that? Go away. What? That's not custard. No, is they're it? Gonna, no. What is that? Macaroni cheese? <laughs> no. What is that? Ah, he doesn't even know after he's tasted it. That's wonderful. It's so secret, even I can't <laughs> tell what it is. What is it? It's so pasty. Yes. I yes! Know. <laughs> if I you know what? I don't care anymore if I win. I scored. <laughs> <laughs> Chopped tomatoes gone in, roasted tomatoes gone in, peppers, and now we've got this really nice, oh. rich sort of pepperade, roasted garlic, peppers, shallots, and tomatoes. So flavour in there is wonderful. But the oil out of the sausage has given this really nice, dark, rich taste. Haricot beans in. When are you going to start? Oh, that's the... fantastic! Seriously. Oh, man, I hit it. You have... That's the best ever. That's the best ever? That's the best ever, and I did it on TV. So... <laughs> right, pasta on top as well. Jeez, I'm getting more excited. Cerijo, peppers at the bottom, tuna on top. Well, see, if your judges are looking for sophisticated taste, they're going <laughs> to oh, go shit. with you. If they're looking for comfort food that they really <laughs> would want to eat... This is comfort you know, food. You know, nah, nah, nah. Now I want to finish this with some breadcrumbs, parmesan and tomatoes. I want the tomatoes to sort of roast and get really nice and crispy on top. The end is I take my crisp... The end is near, I hope. And I, and I break them up like this, see? Right on top. Are Thank we ready you. for the oven? Yeah. Yeah? Top or bottom? What would you like? Uh, which, uh, I'm gonna have the middle. Oh, oh fuck me. Okay, <laughs> quick, <laughs> quick. Okay, there. Okay. Okay, good. Now, they both go in the oven for 20 minutes. We come back and meat loses. <laughs> <laughs> Jack and I have caught our very first salmon together. Yeah! Now for the best part, smoking it at home. To help, I'm inviting an expert to London. Michael Levisher makes award-winning salmon, which he smokes to perfection in chimneys fitted with old wardrobes. Low-tech is all you need when building your own salmon smoker. As long as you can get smoke in and keep it there, you can hang your fish in just about anything. I can't smoke the fish in the house as I'd stink the place out. So Michael's found me what he thinks is the perfect solution. It's self-contained, waterproof, can live in my back garden and even has wheels. <laughs> Hello, how Hello. are you? Tilly! Hey, no, just not how are you? Yeah, yeah good. Are you well? Yes. Yeah. Good to see you. A bit slightly shaken, but... Uh, also, <laughs> what a pile of shit. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. It's a thing of beauty. No? I'm baffled to how we yeah. can smoke salmon inside this. Well, we chose this because it's got a good floor area and there's yeah. enough space from the roof to the floor to get the salmon in. Salmon to hang. Then we're just going to board us in, put rails in, we'll have the... The smoke, and yeah. we'll pipe it in, we'll put a chimney in it so we can vent it out. Unbelievable. In the back now, quickly, let's go in here. Hey. Let's go to the shops. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're off the clarities for lunch. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Having tried and tested our mobile smoking machine, it's back to the job in hand. Before a salmon can be smoked, it needs to be pin-boned, filleted and cured, which removes the moisture and helps preserve the flesh. So we're going to cure it with salt. rock salt? Sea salt. Sea salt. And are we going to add any flavours to that? You no? can add molasses, you can, so you can sweeten it, you can add some herbs. So at this stage you could put things like um, dill. Yep, do a hot smoked salmon and we add thyme with that. Crucial, we leave the skin on and the yep. scale, so that gives it a protection, really. Yeah, because if we took the skin off, the fish would just fall to pieces. And salt on top? Lo loads of salt now. When you look at it, it looks like it's going to taste nothing but yeah. salt. And then within minutes, it's fascinating because it starts to get watery, right? Mm. It'll just it'll start drawing it out. Yeah. Curing will help keep the fish's colour and give it a firmer texture. 
So we'll cure that now for how long? Eight, nine hours. Eight, nine hours. Yeah. Then after that, we wash we'll it off. Wash it off, string it through the tail and hang it up to dry. Good. The salmon is left in salt whilst we turn this piece of junk into our very own smoker. Right, let's go. Let's build a smoker. We make a compartment from wood just about big enough to hang the salmon. So this will be a complete flat board on the bottom. Yeah. Add a couple of curtain rails and a couple of holes to let the smoke in and the smoke out. Keep the fire separate to allow the salmon to smoke without heat and you've got yourself your own simple smoker. Brilliant. The smoke will be made separately and cooled down before it gets into the car so as not to cook the fish. So this is a cold, dry smoking? Yeah, this is cold smoking rather than hot smoking. Hot smoking is smoking and then roasting almost. Yeah. Smouldering oak sawdust will burn slowly to create smoke that will give our salmon its wonderful flavour. And that's the oak, isn't it? It's quite sweet, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's, huh? it's almost caramelly. Mm. So it's a very delicate, slow process. Yeah. Well, it's just like, it, you can't hurry it, so you won't get the depth of flavour and the balance. You'll get a superficial, right. almost like a crust of smokiness. Yeah. We'll replace and relight the sawdust twice in 24 hours, just enough time to flavour the fish. And how quick will that smoke go in there? It's coming through already. It's smoking. Yeah, now it's ready for the fish. Jack, ready to put the salmon in there? Yeah. Let's go. With the smoker finished and the oak sawdust lit, it's in with the salmon that Jack and I caught in Scotland. The salmon Jack's got is the one we caught, and the one the girls have got was also caught yeah. that morning, yeah? Filleted, cured, and now, for the final process, smoking. It smells quite sweet, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Hold that, please. Just spread them out so they're evenly. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. 24 hours for a, a mild flavour. Yeah, 24 hours for a mild flavour. You want to be tasting salmon first and then the, yeah. the sweetness and yeah. the, the oaky and the caramelly sort of flavour the smoke yeah. comes along. The longer you smoke a fish like this, the deeper the flavour. We're leaving ours overnight. The next day, the Ramsey boys' smoked salmon is ready for the family verdict. Right, ready for some smoked salmon? Yeah. Yes. All night last night, and then this morning. Wow, look at the colour of that. Who would like a little taste first? Mmm. Mm -mm. That is delicious. That is amazing. Oh, Should we have some sandwiches? Oh, yeah! Sour cream. Capers, great. Some lemon in there. Some chervil, chop that up on there. The smoked salmon goes on top. Mate, that was a lot of hard work, yeah, but the results are worth it. Tilly, there we go. It's delicious. Caught, gutted, yes. cured, smoked, mm -hmm. and eaten. Mmm. Anyway, we've all agreed, Mummy said that we can keep the Robin Reliant. Yay! Yes! <laughs> Did I? Let's go, guys. Work and talk at the same time, Stevie. Yeah. Right. We can definitely get 50 Absolutely. out of 50 on this course, yeah? No burnt ones on there. Nice. Yeah, good. Right, Steve, they're well and truly fucked, yeah? yeah? They are. Obviously, yeah. Again. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Right, time for dessert. Summer berry mid foyer with lemon curd. Very nice, Jane. Summer berry mid foyer with lemon curd. And mid foyer basically means a thousand layers. Lemon curd, sugar, eggs, lemon zest. And then squeeze all that juice in there. Butter onto a low heat. Whisk. And as it starts to come up to temperature, the egg yolks thicken. And now we're going to pass out all the zest. Oh, beautiful. Cool. Milfoy. Filo pastry. Egg whites. And just brush across the filo pastry. Second layer on top. Egg wash. Finally, our third layer of filo pastry. Take your cutter and push hard. Dust the plate with ice and sugar at the bottom. Filo pastry on top of the plate, and then dust on top. Hot pan, clarified butter. It doesn't burn as easy as a normal butter because all the fat and the water has been taken out. Into the butter. It literally takes seconds. Out. Lemon curd. As it's cooled down, look, it's thickened. Absolutely delicious. Lemon curd on the bottom of the plate to stop the filo pastry shaking around. Lemon curd 
on the disc first. Take your fruit, top it with lemon curd. And then another disc, another teaspoon of lemon curd. One more spoon. Sit on top, ice and sugar. And that has to be the perfect way of eating summer berries with lemon curd. Summer berry midfoy. Done. Steve? Yes, sir. I can't afford for you to burn any more, yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, sure. okay. Come on, Jay, this one's about systems, yeah? Yes, yes sure. Keep it going, yes. What's gonna work? Yeah. Teamwork. Yeah. <laughs> Six there. I'm getting this golden brown effect now. That's it. It takes a while and really then eventually. Yeah. Really good. Well done. Thank Let's you, Chef. Go. Come on. <laughs> See, you've got to pick up the pace now. You're doing yeah. a great job, yeah? Come on. Ange, they are beautiful, by the way. Thank you, Chef. Yeah. Well done, Ange. Oh, oh how's that Steve. Burn? Fuck. <laughs> oh, you're a fucking expert at burning these, you know that? <laughs> oh. Come on, come on, come on, straight on the hot plate. Are they ready? Yeah, they're perfect. Don't burn them, Stevie, so we can plate them up. Off we go, let's go. Go. Yeah. And another. Good. You fucking cook them perfectly now, you fucking. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. It's a beach. It's a beach. Trust me, next time you cook these discs at home for your friends, you'll never fuck them up. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, even you, Steve, yeah, yeah? Now, take yeah. a photo and send it to me, yes? <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell, well done, yeah? <laughs> Stay down, guys. Right. Yeah, get some water. Thanks. Cheers. Coming up, the results of the recipe challenge. Has meatloaf lost it? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Right, welcome back to the F Word. Now, time to find out if meatloaf is a sore loser. Excited? <laughs> Ready? Oh, here we go. There's yours there. Let me carry it over for you because it's oh, very, thank very you hot. Very much. Is I'm that... moving out of the way. Trust me, I won't trip. Okay. Oh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. Okay, I like this bit. Look at that. That's exactly what I was looking for. Mmm. Look mm. at that baby. Mine's perfect. Just what I wanted. Right now, seriously, before they go to get tasted, okay? What okay. was in that tin? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. What's the secret ingredient, please? Cream and chicken soup. Cream of chicken soup. <laughs> uh, right, where's the little no, look at that. Belgian fighter pilot? Let's go. <laughs> um, this is not going to be hard for them to figure this one out. Hello. Thank you. First one. It's very homely. Oh. Yeah. I eat tomatoes. I love the beans in the. Yeah. The crust is a little bit dry, though, to be honest. Yeah, when you actually get a little bit too much of it. Yeah, it doesn't really add to it at all. It's like a creamy or sort of. Yeah, yeah it's very creamy. It looks very cheesy. Yeah. It's not as heavy as you would think, but it's mm. definitely cheesy. I think the texture is quite mm. thick, though. Difficult to get down. I prefer the one with the noodles. The flavours are just uh, lighter, fresher. It's just a tastier dish. I prefer the one without the noodles. I really like the use of the beans, and it gives a really homey comfort food flavour. I like the one with the noodles. I just think the cheese and creamy sauce really complements the tuna there. Well, I prefer the one without the noodles. It has a lot more complex, stronger flavours in it. Right, here we go. OK. Let's see. I mean, you think you're going to win, don't what you? What do you know? It was close. What? Yeah. Okay. What do you mean it was close? It was close. The line was shit, mine was good. Oh, what was back. the score? 3 2. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, oh, 3, two. three two. Who won? Well, you... uh, yes! <laughs> but you know what they say. Go on. Two out of three ain't bad, <laughs> sucker! <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yes, how absolutely. was your dessert? It was absolutely lovely, God. Yes. Can I just say that? Yeah. Please, um, yeah. really straightforward, very simple to do. <laughs> Something you can try at home? I yeah. will try at home. Yes. I had everything. Multivitamins, the antioxidants, it was absolutely fully loaded. And every mouthful I took, it stopped me swearing. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think you'll do, ladies, under the kitchen tonight? I think she's been absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Joni is the light of my life, and she's been so sensational in there. I think all the gang did great. They did very well, very well indeed. Are you, not were you pleased chefs. with them? I was very pleased, and everything they sent, I was very happy with. So, yeah, job well done, and a, a, a very talented, close-knit family. Nice to see you both, <laughs> yes? Great. Excellent. Good to see you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
fantastic. Lemon and the fruit worked very well for me. I really liked the biscuit with it as well because it just gave, gave a little bit more texture to it. So, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Josie, give me the results, please. Thank you very much indeed. Right. The number of guests that are happy to pay for the dessert... 36 out of 50! Really good! Not bad Thank at you. all! Thank you! Thank you very much! Well done, well that's very good! Very good, not perfect, but very good! Good now, tomorrow if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I love your enthusiasm, you know that. Yeah? Now take your talented family brigade out of it and get yourselves a beer. Oh, well done. Thank you so much. Well done, well done. Well done. Well done.